So these are the slides for the show, for the presentation. And at the end, there is the demo. But this is so complicated demo that I'd rather start with the demo, pray to the demo god. And then I'll show you everything uh, about how I uh, made this demo, OK? So let's hope. Um, so before I start with the demo, let's just look at, at the setting. So I, yeah. OK, so I have a camera. So this is here. This is, a Raspberry Pi, this is a Raspberry Pi 4 in this uh, keyboard style shape with all the connectors connectors here. Okay, this is just the same as, uh, as the other uh, the other Pi. Okay, the same as this one, but com comes with the keyboard, which makes it much easier to use. Um, so this is the settings. Uh, it's connected to uh, this dongle, which is HDMI video capture, so I can use a single screen and show you the screen of the Raspberry Pi. Okay. Uh, yeah, I told you. <laughs> and let's try the demo before everything just fall apart. <laughs> okay. So I'll move to the other. It's the same camera application, but to the Raspberry Pi screen. OK, so this is through the dangle. And I'm going to start a .NET application running on the Raspberry Pi. I'll show you the code later, OK? Um, and I use the keyboard of the Raspberry Pi just to uh, start .NET Run on the folder of the .NET application, OK? so I'm. Starting the application, the Raspberry Pi is connected to the to the internet, so it can, it can connect to the Azure cloud. And now it just shows us the information that it receives from uh, <laughs> from the sensors. And I also have a control application running on the on the laptop. Okay, so let's start the control application. The <laughs> at. Okay, I need to use this mouse. I have two two different mice, two two different keyboards, and leave it alone. It's okay. They will see it upside down. It's okay. <laughs> and let's try to start the controlling application. Control F five. So I have three different uh, devices connected to the Pi. One is the red light, the strip LED lights. So if I start different animations, you can see this is a very simple wipe, but we can go to something else like the chase one. We can choose colors. For example, Let's select another one. And let's start. OK. Uh, we can have a rainbow effect if the mouse decides to move. Or we can have this Knight Rider effect. Cool. All these demos come from the .NET uh, um, device uh, GitHub, the samples. So I, put, I took all the samples, put them together, changed them a little bit to have more colors. But these are actually samples that you can download and, and try. OK, the only difference is that I send the message to the cloud, and the cloud send the message to the device to activate these demos, OK? Um, another thing is that I can write down text. OK, and send the information to the device. Did we get it? Yeah. And I also have the, the reading of the different sensors. So I have this BME280, I think, the, the name of the device. It reads the, the current pressure, 
uh, temperature and, and humidity, and it shows you can send, and I send it to the cloud, and I can send it back to the device. So, for example, if I ask it to send the information back to the device, it shows the information on the device. I hope that it did it. Um, and since it's a sensor, may I have a cup of coffee? Coffee, please. Yeah. I told you it's humidity and temperature, so we can try to see what's happened. So first of all, I ask it to send the information in a minimal delay. And now, let's try and see what happened. It's hot. Okay, let's see. Any change? Yeah. So the humidity actually changed before the temperature. <laughs> okay. Uh, probably the temperature will go up also. Yeah, we see a bit of a change with the temperature. So this is the sensor that reads the environmental uh, values and send it to the cloud. So what we see in the demo is a way that we have a way to send info information, what we call telemetry, to the cloud. This is from the sensor. And that we can send back information to the device. And there are two different ways that I'm doing it here. One way is to send information using a queue. So it's like send information to the device. Let's stop everything so it will not, it will not bother you. Let's oh, use this one, and it should stop, yeah. Okay, so one way is sending information using a queue, which means I send information to the device. If the device is online, it gets information. If the device is offline, it will wait for the device. And since it is a queue, you can send many different messages, and by default, it will wait for a week. And the other way is to call a method re reply, re request reply with the device. So the device has to be online. You call the device and you get a reply. So if you need also to get some answers from the device, you can activate this request reply, what they call direct method to the device and get the information. So there, these are the two different ways to communicate with the device. So we saw the demo. The way that I build the IoT device, the code of the IoT device, I use uh, an open source project that I uh, uh, built about six months ago, maybe a year, which uses C Sharp Code Generator to build the boilerplate of the IoT device, which makes it, makes it very easy to build IoT device, uh, device code using C Sharp. So now I can go to the slides and get into the details. So go to the slides, go to the, to the code. It worked. I think that it, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, so let's see. So the ingredients, IoT device, and internet connection. .NET 6, actually you can use .NET 3.1, 5, 6, and so on, 7 soon. C Sharp Source Code Generator, we'll talk about it. Azure IoT Hub, Azure IoT C Sharp Service SDK, and Client SDK, the Service SDK for the controlling application, the Client SDK to actually write the device code, and Visual Studio, VS Code, or actually any editor because it's just .NET Core, right? .NET 5.6. So my name is Alon Fliss. I'm the Chief Software Architect of Code Value, a company, a software company in Israel. I also am Azure MVP and Regional Director, and I'm a maker, so I build stuff. Uh, I have a smart home that I build. Anything that you can uh, write code and, and automate, this is what I usually do to make life much more interesting. Um, and, um, and that's it, this is me. 
So IoT 101. So IoT is a, com com uh, a combination of sensor, system on a chip, a device, the internet, and backend code, the cloud and, anything, and everything that uh, run the system. Um, so this is, in essence, IoT. The things, the device can be any device. Uh, there are tiny devices like the ESP8266 or ESP32. Usually we use C or C++ to develop, to, to write code to these devices. We can use also Python and there are now starting even, even to use uh, some sort of .NET, but probably it will take time until we can use .NET for this kind of devices. There are also uh, much uh, bigger devices, still devices like the Raspberry Pi, they, know, they can run a, a, a full blown operating system like Linux or Windows, Windows 10 for example. There is also the Arduino family, but for this lecture I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi because it's the easiest device to use, the easiest, easiest device to, to write uh, C Sharp code and use C Sharp uh, with it. To sense the world and also to, uh, to activate stuff, we need some other devices like sensors, like the one that we use to sense the temperature and uh, the pressure. And if we want to activate something, we, we need some actuators like relays or motors if we, if we need to move something and so on. But IoT system is more just the single device that is connected to the internet. I connected my home back in 2003 to the internet. I used the pocket PC to run my home. But it wasn't an IoT system because it was a single home, a single device. IoT system is something that you can manage many different devices, hundreds of, hundred, hundred to hundred thousands of devices, and you need a really good back, uh, uh, a really good cloud support to support these devices. You need to secure registration the devices or securely retired the device. You need to manage the, de de the devices to do an over-the-air update uh, for the devices to change settings of the device. Sometimes you need to have a smart edge to do things offline or to do things near the physical uh, uh, sensors and, and not in the cloud. You need to collect vast amount of, of information and you need to analyze. You may want to use machine learning uh, on the device or on the cloud and so on. So usually this is how IoT system uh, looks like. We have the different devices. If they have IP capability like the Raspberry Pi, they can connect directly to the cloud. If they don't, they need to have some sort of a gateway. Raspberry Pi can be a gateway to connect other small devices to the cloud. And then if we talk, if we talk about Azure, we have the Azure IoT Hub, which is the service that provides everything that we need to use devices. We can register devices, we can communicate with the devices, we can manage the devices, and so on. And then we have the system, the system to control stuff, the system to analyze the stream of information, and then at the end, in the end we have a way to visualize uh, uh, the information. So IoT Hub is the, the service of Azure to control devices. And these are the things that you can do with Azure IoT Hub. You can send uh, device to cloud messages. This is what we call telemetry. The temperature reading, things that's, that you want to measure and you, you want to have a continuous information it can be every minute, it can be every several hours. It depends what is the kind of information that you need to send. Do you use battery to operate the device or can you use uh, uh, direct power and so on? You can receive cloud to device messages. Uh, and I told you about two ways to do it, using a queue or as a direct call, like the one that appears here. You can initiate five file uploads. Sometimes, it, sometimes it's much better and cheaper to upload a file. For example, you collect uh, logs and you want to ship all those logs to the cloud. So upload will be cheaper than using telemetry. Okay, so you can initiate upload 
And in the cloud, you can get an event that tells you whenever the upload is finished and now you can process the data. Okay? Uploads use HTTP, while usually when we send telemetry, we use MQTT, even though we can use HTTP and AMQP. It's different protocols. But uploads use HTTP. And of course, you can manage Azure IoT Edge devices, which is a different total story. It's a containers base, um, require uh, capabilities from the device, but actually you can, you can run IoT Edge on the Raspberry Pi. From the cloud side, you can, you, this is the opposite, okay? This is the mirror of what you can do with the device. So you can receive device to cloud messages, send cloud to device messages, receive delivery, acknowledge that the information got to the device, gets the information about the device status, whether it's connected, when was the last time that the device was connected. Um, you can get message and enrich the message. So the device send the message, you know the device ID, so now you can add more information to the message and you can route the message to another service with, with or without the enrichment. And you can uh, manage the twin. The device has a twin, think about it like a no DB, a no SQL DB uh, that uh, manage all the, all the different devices. So each device has a device twin. The tags is just information that you can put and you can read from the cloud. The device does not know about the tags. And then you have two kinds of properties. Desired properties are properties that the cloud wants to set in the device. They will be copied, download to the device. Uh, this is for the um, setting. Okay, we want to change things that the device will get. And we have the reported property, which are the properties that the device will send to the cloud. So for example, I want to send the battery level or something which is not as telemetry that I send all the time, but it's more like a status that they want to send or want to set. There is a way to manage jobs. Uh, I want to update the uh, desired property of, I don't know, the frequency of sending messages to the cloud only for those devices that their battery level is lower than something. So I can create a query and run a job according to the query and manage those jobs, knows if they uh, finish or not, how many of them uh, run, and so on. So this is the Azure IoT Hub. The device to end is just a JSON file like, an, like any other JSON-based NoSQL DB, okay? And we have the SDKs, the Software Development Kits. We have SDK for the device, the device SDK, and we have SDK for the cloud, the service SDK. The device SDK is the SDK that we use to uh, write the code that runs in the device, and we have SDK uh, in different language, languages target, dar, targeting different operating systems, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, the ESP, and so on, uh, Autos, and so on. We have also provisioning SDK to support uh, uh, the device provisioning service, and the edge runtime. If we don't want to use the SDK, we can also use the REST API, or this is from the cloud side, or the MQTT protocol, the bare MQTT protocol, this is from the device side. But usually it's much easier to use the SDK than to use the bare REST or MQTT protocol. So the telemetry goes to the cloud and from the IoT Hub, we need to route the telemetry to somewhere else. In the IoT Hub, there is some sort of event hub. Uh, if you don't know about the event hub service of Azure, this is like Kafka. It gets all the information and you can read directly from the event hub using consumer group. Or much easier, much, in a much easier way, you can route the information to service bus queue, to another event hub, to any, any other queuing-like mechanism of the cloud. And you can uh, use a query to, to uh, route the, only the information that uh, fulfills some sort of uh, filter, okay? 
So this was uh, the IoT hub. Now let's talk about the .NET support for devices, the .NET support for running Raspberry, uh, to, to use the Raspberry Pi, for example, using C Sharp. So we have two different libraries, two different NuGet packages. One is the system device GPIO, and the second one is the device binding. Think about these two different packages as the low-level package and the higher-level package. The GPIO is the package that knows how to communicate with the different buses and I/O ports of the device. So if we want, or if they want to target different hardware, they need to change uh, this GPIO library and, and add support to this specific hardware. And the device binding is the package, or it's a multiple device package that uh, let us choose different controllers, different sensors, and use them. So instead of understanding how I should communicate in a low-level way with the screen or the LED uh, uh, strip, I can just ask the screen to write this text or to scroll the text, and that's it. Because I have a device in the device binding that knows how to take text and put it in, in, in the screen. So I don't need to understand the low-level protocol of each of the devices. It's an abstraction way, and it makes it much easier to use the different devices. OK? Now, you can find them on GitHub. Everything is open source. So let's go to these libraries. Um, so you have everything here. You have the documentation, the quick start, uh, to different tutorial, like a very simple one to uh, blink a LED, like the, the hello world of, uh, of IoT. OK? So you see the Raspberry Pi. You, you see the schema, how you should, uh, how, how you should um, connect uh, the resistor and the LED, and then you see uh, how to create the app. So .NET new console application with the name, and then add the NuGet package of the device binding, and then write a very simple code uh, that open the, con create the uh, GPIO controller, open the pin, and then write high and low, wait for a, for a second in a loop. So a very simple way to use C Sharp to blink a LED. OK? And it becomes much more complicated when you use uh, other devices which are more complicated devices. OK? Uh, so for example, uh, if we'll go to the device binding, you can see a long list, a long list of different devices. So for example, if I'll take one of the devices that I use here, I think this is the screen. OK, so you see this, this is the open source code. You see the different fonts. If you want to change the font, you can. OK, it's, everything is open source. And there is the sample code uh, that show you, shows you how you can use uh, the device to do different stuff, like writing text, uh, putting some, I think this is a smiley or something. Yeah, this is a smiley that you can put. Okay, so you can set the different bits, the different LEDs. So it is very easy to use these libraries. Okay? And there is also information how to set up the device, because usually when you start with a new Raspberry Pi, you download the, the operating system, you set the device, Usually, it will come uh, with uh, everything disabled. You need to enable the I2C bus and uh, uh, the different buses and so on. Uh, so it will tell you there is an information on, on how to set everything so everything will work, OK? So just follow the information. OK, so we, s we talked about the Azure IoT Hub and how we communicate with Azure. We, talk about, uh, we talked about how we can uh, use C Sharp and .NET to operate Raspberry Pi and other devices. Now let's talk about the third part of the, of the lecture, which is the source code generator that enables us to do it in a very easy way. So 
What is a source uh, generator? It's just something that lets you generate code, which means that you write a little bit of code and get much more code from this little bit of code. Um, so the idea is that you have a C sharp files, and somehow you annotate those files. I use attribute, this is the easier way to annotate code in C sharp, but you can use anything. You can choose to annotate using some sort of, uh, uh, the way that you write the code, it can be uh, even uh, comments, doesn't really matter. As long as you can read it in your source code generator and decide what to do with it. Attribute is the easiest way. So you have the C sharp files, and the C sharp compiler, the, name, the code name Roslyn, takes those files, pairs the, the files, uh, create this uh, syntax, uh, uh, C sharp uh, uh, code syntax tree, and then it compiles the files. But uh, when it compiles the files, it calls my, my and other code generators that the user chooses to use. So the user just, the user, the developer just asks to use a NuGet package of a source code generator. And this NuGet package, since it, it is a source code generator, uh, it becomes part of the, of the compilation. So the uh, C sharp f the file goes through compilation. There is the syntax tree and then the semantic tree or the semantic information. So your source code generator gets first the syntax tree and then the semantic information. And you can choose whether to use either of them to generate your code. Okay. Once you generate the code, the code that you are, that you generate is a, is also a C sharp file. So it's a text generator. You just need to write text. Take, take a string builder and write your own text. Take a template and put the thing in, inside the template. Decided what, what is the way that you want to build the uh, source file. These source files also goes to the compilation and then we get the result, which is the IL code that is a combination of the original source and the uh, code that came from the code generator. The generated code by default is not in the disk, but you can ask it to be in the disk. Even though if it's not, that it is not in the disk, when you do a single step, you can single step through the generated code, which is, this is what actually, what we want if we want to see what's really happened. What, you, what can you do with it? Anything, like uh, swap reflection to compile time if you know in advance what is the code that needs to be generated, or automated processing, or automated boring types, and this is actually what I did with the Azure IoT. There is a lot of repeated, repeated code for any uh, uh, desired property, any um, com com the, the way to send telemetry to the cloud, it's all, it, it is always the same. So what I did, I just, use code generator to generate uh, the repeatable, repeated code. Let's continue on. So usually what's happened is that the code generator calls your, gen the Roslyn compiler calls your generator, and in the initialize we register the syntax node notification, and now whenever it reaches a syntax node, it calls our syntax receiver and we get the information about the node, we collect the information. You see on visit syntax node, we collect the information, and then when it calls the execute, we emit our code. Okay, so it goes through the original code, we collect information, it asks us to generate our code, we create the CS file and give it to, uh, uh, to the system, and it uses the CS file, compile it, and every, if everything goes well, we get uh, the result. Um, how do we debug source code generator? So one way is to put debugger launch or debugger break, but this is a very bad way because it will start a new Visual Studio. And if in the new Visual Studio there is a code source generator with debugger launch, it will continue to start more Visual Studios, <laughs> okay? So there is a much better way to, gen to uh, debug, and I'll show it. Uh, in Visual Studio 2019 and 2022, there is a way to tell the code generator to debug the other application which, which uses the code generator. But you actually debug your 
generator. So I'll show you it uh, uh, soon. So now let's get into the details. Let's get, get into the IoT uh, code generator and see the different code. We'll see the code of the device. We'll see the code of the code generator. We'll see the code that run in Azure. OK, we'll see the different part. I can use the coffee to drink. OK, so this is the source code on GitHub. So you can go and look at the source code. Um, there is everything here. There is uh, the, the um, GitHub action that builds the code and create the NuGet packages. So there's the action. You can see that in when I prepared this lecture 12 days ago, um, I created a new version because I found a bug. <laughs> OK. Uh, if you create your device without using a namespace, there was a problem there. OK, I didn't care about, usually you have a name source, so I didn't look at what it, it just created the name source, which is the global colon colon something. OK, so now I take care about it also. Um, and of course, you have the different code, but the code is already open uh, here. Can you see it or is it too small? Let's try. Um, so let's do something. Let's try to hope that it will work. Display uh, setting. What is the DPI? I hope that it will not uh, create. Did it change? I'm not sure. Something happened. I'm not sure which is, if it, it is good, but OK. All right. So let's move from the control app to uh, the, let's go to the code generator. So let's, let's start with how we use the code generator. So this is the device, the NDC device, the device that uh, And now it's too big. <laughs> OK. Uh, so um, this is just a console application. I use IOC containers, so I add all the different devices, OK? And um, get the service of IoT device. The init IoT hub client um, async, this is a generated function, OK? So if we'll go to the, to the IoT device, If it will, it doesn't want to go to the IoT device, so let's start, try to go from here to the, maybe because this is not the set as. Ah, this is because there are two IoT devices. One is in the code generated and one is the original code. OK, so let's start with the original code. So you can see that this device, this class, is decorated with the IoT Hub and also generates send method with the send ask, async name. OK, and we have this partial class. We have a reported property. This is a field decorated as reported property. OK. We have also a field decorated as desired property or, or a property decorated as desired property. So this property will be set, set from the cloud. We have the device client with the connection string coming from uh, environment variable. OK. And now let's go to the generated code. And now we see that this is the generated code. Uh, we have the init IoT app client async. We see that it creates the, the uh, device and get the device twin and does all the boilerplate that is needed to communicate with the cloud. Now to see that this is actually a code generation, let's do something. Let's take this one 
to the side and somehow like let's take Visual Studio to the other side and let's see uh, for example um, let's go to the generated send function, send async. And let's go to this side and let's change the attribute, it's this one. And instead of send async, let's call it send one, two, three, async. And you see that now the method name is send one, two, three, async, so it's just right away. So whenever you change the code, the generator uh, pop in and, and change the code. Okay, this is so cool. <laughs> okay, All right. So this is the magic of the code generator, and and actually it makes it very easy to build an IoT device uh, because you just need to decorate the code and you get everything. You don't need to call a function to update the desired property, you don't need to create a function to send information to the cloud, you, you, have, you get everything from the code generator, okay? Um, now let's look at, at the code generator itself, okay? So let's move to, to the IoT Hub code generator, okay. So, um, the, this is the generator class, too big, is it okay, huh, no, copilot, do you know copilot, so I was a beta tester and now they made it public, so now they want $10 a month I think, yeah. So uh, I need to decide, but <laughs> I think it's worth it. But uh, anyway, but it just happened this week, I think, that they changed, uh, I think, the other day. So, so again, to, to create a, a code, uh, a sort generator, you need to decorate your class with a generator attribute, and you need to uh, implement the ISO generator interface, okay? Once you do, do that, you need to implement the different uh, uh, functions of the ISO generator. So one of them is the initialize. So from the initialize, you, you use the context to register your syntax receiver. You can also register for semantic receiver. It depends the way that you use uh, the source code generator. Actually, I started with the syntax receiver, and I think that it would be better to go with the semantic, because the syntax, I get the, the different uh, part of the code but now I need to deal with spaces and you know different things that you can, it's okay to write uh, some, sometimes something in this way and the other way. So if it's, if it's semantic, somebody else, uh, the, the compiler know what happened, just give you the result, and if it's a syntax, you need to deal with the, the things that the compiler deals with. So maybe the, the other way is better, but this is actually maybe simpler because you see the code that you start with and you can also use it. So you can use the name of the attribute, or the name of the property to create something and so on. So probably a mixture of the two is the best, okay? So, and, and now I register the syntax uh, uh, receiver and the, in the execute, I actually do the code generator and execute the code so I look for uh, the IoT Hub attribute, and, and, and here I uh, go through all the uh, information that I collected and generate the code. And the code generation, generation itself, it's many different classes that handle uh, different, uh, different parts. So this is the create desire update method. And you see that uh, I uh, created some sort of a utilities some sort of utilities like create a block, so open and close the parentheses, the curly parentheses, or, or create a try block, and, um, and uh, using if, and if is a, a, a code that 
use statement if expression and condition, and this build the statement. So at the end, everything is append or append line. But if you want to build your own uh, source generator, you can use my utilities. Okay. But eventually, what we get is just text file, just a C sharp file. Now, how do you test uh, the code? So, uh, before the test, I'll show you the test. Another thing is that you need all those attributes. So, to make it easier, easier I created another assembly which is just the different attributes. Okay, so when you use the generator, you just need to add two different NuGet packages, the source generator and the SDK, and then you can use uh, the source generator. Now let's talk about testing. So I have many different tests. This is the test explorer. Actually, there are 41 te tests. Okay, 41 different tests, and the way that I did it is I created a test case, uh, generate the output, and then use, do you know uh, .NET approval, approval test? Approval test is a very nice way to, to create unit test or, or integration test. Uh, you run the test, you collect information as a, te as a text, and then you ask approval to check whether this is the same as the last time that you approved the text file. Okay, now if it's the same, the test just goes well. If it's not, it will open beyond compare or windy for whenever, whatever uh, compare tool that you ask it to, to open and show you the different. Now, now you can say, okay, the difference is okay because I changed something and it's still fine, so just save the result and that's it, next time it will pass. Or you can see that now the, the result is, is not okay and, and you can um, try to fix to see what goes wrong. So, for example, I can try to, uh, to do something, let's go to create, uh, Let's see, uh, create device client method, okay? And let's do something, let's put underscore before of the private, okay? And let's now go to the test. This was create device client, so let's see if we have, we have a test, test explorer. Uh, test, uh, probably test connections. I think this will be okay. Let's run this one. So it's build the generator because I changed the, the generator. And okay, and there was a problem. And now th this is the windif. And actually there are two things. The first but I put all the warning and errors of the compiler, so I will see what was wrong. So if I move to the right, I can see that there is all these syntax errors and so on. And then if we go down, then I can see that there is underscore private here, which is the difference. So again, very easy way to create tests, any test, that doesn't have to be with source code generator, but for the source code generator, is, it is very nice because uh, I cre can create many different tests in a very easy way. Um, so let's uh, undo git, undo changes, okay. 
Uh, so this is how you can test the source code generator. So again, let's go to the, to the test code. Uh, let's close it. So in the test code, I have, um, this is the test runner, but let's go to one of the test case. So I have this original code the test case that I want to test, and then uh, this original code will be the input, the code generator will create the test, and then we create the result, and then I will compare the result. And also will I, I uh, will pass it a compilation as, and see if there, there are compilation error. So you can see um, this is the test runner, and the test runner uh, get the generated output, and compare the gener using approval, does the verify with the output. So that's it. And the get generated output, this is something that uses the ability of the source code generator. So there's the C-sharp syntax tree, parse text of the source, get a reference, get all the different assemblies, add the different needed files, does the, compil it does the compilation, get the diagnostic of the compilation, and return all the different results. So again, if you need to build your own source generator, you can use this code to do, to do the test, okay? Um, for the final part, let's talk about the, the cloud itself, okay? Because we saw uh, the device and the device code, we saw the source code generator, how we use these attributes to build the real to use the device SDK to communicate with the cloud. Now let's talk about the cloud itself. So in the cloud, um, there is sign here, here, here. Let's see, let's hope that it will. So in the cloud, I have the Azure IoT Hub. Yes, no, not this one. No, no, no. Okay, let's go from here, duplicate. This one, yeah, um, let's see, and this see demo here. This is the resource scope. So for this demo, I created only two resources. One is the Azure IoT Hub, the other one is the service bus, uh, that the messages will go to the service bus, and the, um, the UI application, that you saw, it will just get information from the service bus using the service bus SDK, okay? So this is the IoT Hub. Um, so you see, you see that uh, there, there were several messages you, uh, during this uh, uh, lecture. You can see the different devices. Probably there is only a <laughs> single device in this case, just the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so this is the RPI4 device. Uh, and if I get into the device, you can see the device twin. Okay, so this is the NoSQL DB that, uh, that any device um, has. So we can see that the device ID, we see that the device is enabled, it's connected, so it continues to send messages now. Um, and we see that we have desired property, so we, the reporting interval in second is five. If you remember, I moved the slide to the left side, so the uh, client, the services decay, uh, called the, uh, or change the device to win and tell it to set this value to five, so the device now knows to send information each five seconds, okay? Uh, because the desired property, properties are reflected into the device. I don't need to do anything. I just need to change them in the cloud. Uh, also, there are the reported properties. So the lead brightness reported to be 100% uh, and, and that's it, okay? So now let's, lo let's look at, at, the, um, at the code of the uh, services decay. So uh, I decided to use WinForm, and I was regretted to use WinForm because of the DPI things. <laughs> I was lazy to use something else like WPF or something, but for this demo, it's, I thought that WinForm is just good enough. So let's talk about the details, not the WinForm. 
So um, this is the uh, IoT uh, cloud client. So we have the service client. This is like the device client. This is the, the mirror of the device client. This is from the, uh, from the cloud point of view. We have the device ID. The registry manager let me to manipulate and read and write the device twin. Okay. Um, I have uh, a property that tells whether the device is connected or not. I get a connection string from the environment variable. This is the, the connection string of the IoT hub itself. So it lets me to control all the devices. Okay. Um, and you can get the connection string from the, from the cloud from the portal. Uh, I have also the device ID, the RPI4. It comes from, envir from an environment variable. Um, what else? So create from connection string the device client. And then uh, open async, the, ser the service client, not the device client, the service client. And uh, Create the registry manager again from the connection string. And now show message on the device. I get I create a device message and send async. This is again an API of the service client. So I send async to the device ID, the device message. And the device message is an encoded binary of the text message. This will be shown on the on the matrix screen. And this goes to a queue. Okay, so when if the device is not connected, if I'll send it, it will stay there, and the device will get it whenever it will be connected again. Start effect, this is the direct direct call for the device. So I created JSON with the known data, known format that I created, so the device can get the JSON and know and knows what to do with it. Um, and so there is the command, so the different effect of the LED uh, uh, strip, the color and the extra color, the two different colors, okay? And then I serialize it to the JSON and use the cloud to device method. Again, this is uh, a class of the service SDK that lets me call directly to a device. Now the device can be written in C sharp like here, but it can also be written in Python. C does not really matter because it's just a JSON that goes to the device. But this has to, this, uh, to, to this to, to work well, the device has to be connected. If it's not connected, you will get an error or an exception uh, here. And then the result are just, and, and before the call, I set the JSON payload and invoke device method. Since I don't care about the result, I don't read the result, but if I wanted to, to get some information for the device, this function also re, uh, return a result, okay? Stop effect is just another uh, start effect with stop, okay? Uh, what else? Uh, is device connected? I query the device registry. So um, device connection state in the uh, device's state. Uh, update brightness, I change the desired property. So uh, property name policy, it's camel case. Again, JSON and then set payload and no, this is again the, a direct call. This is update update reporting property. So I do some sort of a, a patch to the desired property using the registry manager. So you see that there is a good way to uh, there is a way to control everything from the cloud or to get the information in the device. So you have both ways. Actually, I thought whether to also create source, source generator for the cloud part, but I think that the cloud part is very easy. So I'm not sure that this is something that, uh, uh, that worth it, but maybe for those that don't know how to use the, the API, maybe it will be easier to create desire and report it the same way that I created for the device client, and then it will be very easy to use uh, also to create the control application, okay? So let's wrap up. We started with the demo. We can actually run it again. Now the DPI will be a problem, but I don't really care. <laughs> Told you. Uh, let's set, set the start up. Where is it? Here. 
I told you. Uh, <laughs> so we can send data or start some sort of effect. Yeah. I, you're right. <laughs> you see the DPI problem. <laughs> um, so uh, we started with the demo. Actually, it works also at the end, which is good. Uh, you can come up later and see the setting. Uh, and I took it all the way from Israel, Israel to here, so it's a long way. Um, and then we go to the three different parts. We talked about the device itself, how the device can connect to the cloud. Actually, we use C Sharp, but, but under the hood, what it does, it just translates everything to MQTT, MQTT protocol and talk with Azure. In the Azure, there is the IoT Hub. This is the mighty service of IoT that does everything, uh, manages the different devices, let us con communicate with the device in an asynchronous or synchronous way, um, handle the different properties, the desired properties. So from the cloud, I can desire, ask the device to do something, or from the device, I can report with reported property about the status of, of the device. And then, we have the service SDK that from the cloud side, we can uh, control the different devices. I just need to change the device ID and I, I can control another device. And we talked about C Sharp uh, Source Generator, a very nice and easy way to build uh, generators that uh, uh, reduce the amount of effort that <laughs> we have an error. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> anyway. Um, so a very easy way to uh, uh, create this uh, boilerplate code that uh, you always need to do. If you try my IoT Hub uh, code generator, you just need to put a single attribute and you have a device. I, p I pick um, everything as a default, the default connection string, the default device, now everything is a default, but you have a device with just a single attribute. Uh, of course, if you want to use device provisioning service, if you want to use different protocols and so on, you need to provide more attributes, attributes with more information. But then again, you'll get the code generate, generated for you. So I hope that uh, you can use at least part of the things that I showed you in uh, this lecture, and uh, I wish you a nice evening. Thank you. Any question? questions? Yeah. This is a good question. What happens if there is no internet connection? So the device continue to work, okay, but uh, in a disconnected way. So what? If you send it, if you ask uh, or if you use the queued way to send information from the cloud, then it will wait for the device to be connected and to get the information. The device also can collect, depends on the amount of memory that the device has, can collect the telemetry information and later on send it to the cloud. But you need to, to do it yourself. If you want to have a better, easier way to do it, use the IoT Edge. The IoT Edge has its own IoT hub built in on the device and it knows how to do store and forward. So you can take the IoT Edge, connect other devices, and use the IoT Edge as the um, router, as the way to go to the cloud, and IoT Edge knows how to work in, in an offline way, so it also uh, stores the information from the other devices until it will be back connected to the cloud. So it's either you use a simple device, but you need to work harder and you need to collect the information and wait until you have a connection. Or you can use uh, Azure IoT Edge and use the built-in offline capability of the Azure IoT Edge. These are the two ways. Okay. Another question? Okay. So thank you. <laughs>